For over 50 million years, the horse has evolved from a dog-sized, three-toed, forest-dwelling animal into a herd animal that graces on open grassland. It has long legs, walks on its toes, and has natural speed and stamina. Today's horses illustrate the profound impact of selective breeding and training for athletic ability. A critical component of this ability is the capacity of the circulatory system and the size of the horse's heart. The equine heart weighs up to 1% of its body weight, or 10 pounds for an average horse. At maximum effort, the horse's heart can fill at least 11 5-gallon wash pails, pumping 250 liters a minute. But where do we go to gain insights into the true maximum capacity of the horse's incredible cardiovascular system? The racing standard bred is a breed that exhibits superlative athletic performance through selection and training. For at least 20 years, average performance times for one-mile races have fallen by one second each year, and there seems to be no end in sight. This raises questions. How hard is the heart working during the average race mile? How close are these horses to their physiologic limits? And if they're close to their physiologic limits, how close are they to going over that? And what might be the consequences? And how can we use this information to assess the average poor performance horse? This summer, we undertook a study designed to answer some of these questions. The primary objective was to monitor heart rate and rhythm during regularly scheduled race events in standard bred horses from the moment they were harnessed in the paddock through warm-up to the end of the race. This meant coming up with a way in which we could monitor heart rate and rhythm reliably and without interfering with the racing in any way. The solution to this technical challenge is a world first for the Ontario Veterinary College, a lightweight electrode harness that can be mounted directly against the horse's body beneath the standard girth. The new innovation requires no special skin preparation and can be connected to a regular solid-state halter recording device. In order to gain full support for our research study, we had to come up with a way to monitor heart rate and rhythm that would not interfere with racing in any way, a way that would be fully acceptable to horsemen and women, to the racetrack and also to the Ontario Racing Commission. The solution was to put the equipment on all of the horses running in two races per night by a highly trained team of researchers who could apply and remove the equipment without any interference with the regular paddock procedures. First simple answer to what we, what we might get out of this project is first we want to have a range of variation of what is normal on a horse in its warm-up and during a race. The range of normal variation in heart rate and rhythm during racing is not known because nobody's ever looked at it. So that will give us a baseline for study for evaluation of poor performance in horses. This is one of the standard bed races we instrumented at Mohawk Racetrack. And the horse we're interested in and whose ECG we're showing is an eight-year-old gelding called DC's Bunny. All systems go. And Mark McDonald lifts off with Nada Prude who jets to the front. DC's Bunny secures his favorite spot and that is the pocket spot. Backed up at the rail from in third is All My Style. Fourth away, Spires Jonathan, then it's long shot American Hero. And the six to five favorite will play a big time game of catch up. That's Rudy the Rock, who gapped the gate and trails looking at five. And at this five point in the race, the heart is beating at 230 plus beats per minute and is pumping out as much blood as it possibly can. The horse is working at the top end of his effort. And as we approach the half mile post, Everybody's settled into their pace and our horse is still lying second. The system that is pumping blood to the periphery and maintaining this intense muscle activity is simply a beautifully coordinated system and doesn't just involve the heart, but involves the entire circulatory system. Our horse is still in second position, but he's starting to fall back a little bit. There's been no change in heart rate, perhaps he's starting to tire a little bit. The heart rate is now 230 again, and the horse is approaching the three-quarter mile post. Heart rate is now actually approaching 240 as we come into the stretch. We've just passed the three-quarter mile post. This is called the stretch run, and this is when we tend to see the very highest heart rates. So 240 right now, and the horse is starting to fall back a little bit. 
These tremendously high heart rates during the race have to be compared with the horse's resting heart rate of only 40 beats per minute when DC's bunny was resting in the paddock. This remarkable change in heart rate is one of the features that characterizes the horse's cardiovascular system when compared with many other species. Coming on to get third American hero, we start the card with not approved winning over this fast track in 152 and 3.